So, what is this, Leo? We're still at Leo. Leo, the judgment card is asking you to forget everything that you thought you knew because you're going through a regeneration, right? And it's number 20, so it's uh, reducing to a two. So that's connected to the high priestess, right? Um, <laughs> and it's also connected to the justice card because that's 11 and that's a two as well. So forget everything that you thought you knew, right? with the high priestess because that's divine order so you can never be ahead of that right and then also with the justice card you never really know how the tables might turn or the turn of events could occur you know what i mean with just a little bit more information that changes your life right all we need is like a little bit more evidence Right with the justice card, and that could change a, a yes to a no or a no to a yes. So it's saying, like, with the judgment card or the rebirth card, it's saying you're going through a very sensitive period. So don't make any um, rash decisions, okay? Because the rebirth card is, is asking you not to do that as well. Uh, don't get stuck in your own, don't get in your own way either. That's what this card is talking about. Don't get in your own way because Pluto gets its, gets in its own way. It's connected to that energy of, um, of Aries, but it's also connected to the energy of Scorpio. So this is like not letting material things get in the way and not letting your emotions get in the way and not coming from a place of lack because if you come from a place of lack, then that will control you. And then you, your reality will be that, you know? Um, yeah. And this is also saying that, like, you have to give way to this tremendous and very pivotal change. Because you're coming into something new. It's a surprise for you. You know what I mean? You don't know what is ahead of you. So you have to let go of things sometimes. And you have to accept things for what they are. Because it's like, no one is going to say, okay, so this is what's going to happen to you five years later after you let this thing go. So go ahead and let it go so we can give you this. You have to trust in, trust in the universe, right? You have to trust in spirit. And that's what the judgment card is talking about. It's connected to high priestess, right? Truth and trust. That is the justice card. So, you know, you just got to put your trust in God. All right. So, Virgo, we got the two of wands. And the two of wands is talking about transformation. But it's not like anything that is out of your reach. The two of wands says that this is very much within your reach. Um, you know, it's saying that what you see yourself being or doing is already happening. You know, you have to see it as if it's already happening for you. It doesn't matter how long it takes, you know what I mean? Because sometimes voyages and journeys take a long time. It's kind of like, do you want to be in the place that you've always dreamt of being right now? What are you gonna do when you get there? Isn't it about the journey? Isn't it about the people that you meet getting to where you're going so that when you get to where you're going, you have all of those layers of relationships and you have all of those layers of experiences and going to, you know, places that you've never been. And now you have accumulated knowledge that you didn't know that helped you change your perspective and all of this other stuff. We have to be willing, right? Aries, two of wands, Mars, and Aries. It literally is in the sign that it rules. We have to be willing to change. And we have to be willing to take uncertain risks. Right? Sometimes. This is saying don't get too stuck on something that is, you know, especially if it's happening in your early life. I will tell you this. You know, when I was a, I'm still a dancer, but when I was a young dancer, it was like everything was dance. Everything was dance. And I didn't see anything else but that. And now that I'm older and I've done more things and I've been more places, I guess, it's like 
I realized that everything that came after dance was really just enhancing that for me. <laughs> and dance was going to enhance everything else that I was going to have introduced or come to me later with and with other stuff too so you have to be able to like bring balance to everything in your life and that's what the two of ones asks us to do as well we have to actively monitor our lives to bring balance to them because sometimes we just get stuck and we get set in our ways and that's what the two of, two of ones talks about too we get or we get we get set in our ways and sometimes we get stuck in our ways too. I mean, it is a two, so it's related to the second house of Taurus as well. So it's like, what do you want to do? Say it. That doesn't mean it's going to happen next week. You know, it, it takes some time for things to actually um, happen, right? Think about how much time it takes a tree to grow, you know? Okay, Libra. All right, King of Cups. So this is um, interesting because this card is you, one third you. And then it is also, um, hmm, hmm, two thirds Scorpio. But it's interesting because the cup in this, in these decks, they almost look like hourglasses, right? When you turn the cup upside down, it still looks the same. You can drink from the bottom or the top. Um, anyway, the King of Cups is air. So we're thinking, we're using logic, right? Over emotion. And the King of Cups is Scorpio, okay? And Scorpio sometimes, a lot of the times, is not using logic of emotion. It, it, it relies on emotion more than logic. Okay. And that gets them into trouble because emotions are not necessarily real. You know, you can see the surface of the water and not see what's in it at all. And then you jump down in there and you realize that there are alligators in there. Or <laughs> you could see the water and you can see that you can't see it at all. And then you jump in and then you can see underneath that there's goldfish and you know, all kinds of beautiful clownfish or whatnot, right? Dory, Nemo, they're all under there, beautiful. Anyway, this says use logic over emotion, right? And that could be, is it a positive emotion? Is it a negative emotion? Is it a an emotion that you're not ne necessarily, you're letting get out of, control you know what I mean it could be something you could be like swooning over somebody because this could be a relationship it could be like oh my god I feel so much about this person but it's like come on be logical use some reason don't get stuck on the way that you feel about this person right because you don't know how they feel about you so we're using logic over emotion and also sometimes right the king of cups has learned through trial and error and through time, because I said over time, this cup looks like an hourglass, that I have to be reasonable with myself when I am faced with some emotions. Because I know that my instinct is to probably go to places that are imaginative, you know? And in this card, we see earth, we see trees, and we see grass. And then we see stone with the King of Cups sitting on it. And then it goes into the water. So there's a sense of balance here between the real and the illusion. You know, stay balanced between those two, right? And uh, we want to use the imagination for creative purposes more so than creating... Um, fictitious scenarios or narratives based on what we might be feeling that really just stems from how we are relating to, you know, our past historical references. 
you know, of ourselves and our relationships and our inner thoughts and our in, you know, inner interpersonal relationships, all of that. This is relationships and then it's like intimate relationships. The King of Cups is connected to the Four of Cups, which is Moon and Cancer. So you could be getting like, um, you could be dealing with Moon and Cancer. You could be dealing with this, um, Cancer. Or even a Scorpio. Um, this is also like how our emotions prevent us from being, you know, great. Right? Because if you think of the Four of Cups as somebody that's just sitting there that needs to be a leader for themselves in that moment, but can't because they are, you know, so codependent on the emotions that have caused them to be in the place that they are in. You know what I mean? So it's like, stop giving power to those emotions that are coming from like a negative vibrational place. All right. Scorpio. Six of Wands. So this is Jupiter and Leo. And if we look at Jupiter being in, okay, so Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. So after Cancer is Leo. So it has to do with work and it might have to do with finances and stabilizing finances and maybe looking for a second job or another job or adding a job to it, you know, to your schedule, something like that. Adding more days to your schedule, something like that. Um, but then if we look at Sag, and we go around to Leo, I think, let's see, Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo. That's nine houses from where it originates. So Jupiter loves the ninth house. So Jupiter loves being in Leo, right? So, because Jupiter naturally rules the ninth house. So here we are saying that there's an opportunity, there's like some luck. You're coming into some luck. You might even be coming into some money. So something is happening and something is changing your reality, like your daily life. It could be so you. You could be acquiring something that you that you have needed. You know, I feel like you're discovering something that is breathing life back into you, right? Um, only because like there's a little bit of water in this card here, but it's on the ground. It's very shallow water. So it's like reflecting on something, you know? And, and usually when you find water, it's almost like, I don't know, there's like life there, you know? So maybe you are, you are feeling reinvigorated in some kind of way because of what you are discovering. Because the ninth house has to do with discovery. So you could be finding something that is uh, valuable to you in some kind of way. And that could be a job or it could be something that you lost, right? Uh, you might be happy about that. Um, yes, this could even be, even, even be something that someone loaned you or gave you, or maybe it was something that you cherished or something like that. And it was very important that you find this thing because it was going to determine whether or not you know, somebody would have been happy with you or something like that, you know what I mean? Because it's Jupiter and Leo and in this card, there are people, it usually is like people giving you like the, I'm so glad, I'm so happy that it happened, you know, or finally that type of thing. So that's what I'm getting for you, um, Scorpio. So it's finally happening. So that's good. You know, you're feeling like content again. There's a sense of, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing that's happening, you know. Ah, okay. Sagittarius? I believe. Let's see. Let me make sure I got it right. Sagittarius, right. Uh, we're going to move on to the next video.